Hello, and welcome to the Bluegrass Sports Show, or the BS Show. We are two fat guys talking the crap. <laughs> I'm Carl. I am Perry. The animal. We ain't, you ain't been doing the, the Sultan of Slaughter, whatever that BS is you used to do. You know what I mean? Where <laughs> you'd come up with something? Anyway. We are the Fantastic Safabi. There you go. That'll work. All right. I think so, I meant to say flabby. It don't matter. Like the fatty, McDonald's fatty. quarter pounder, we are hotter and juicier than before. <laughs> anyway, uh, today, <laughs> you threw me completely off. Today, we're going over the playoffs again. Right. Surprise. I feel like I'm blood on my shorts. Uh, <laughs> Marv bleeds. He just got off the sock. <laughs> uh... Well, Pooey. Oh, we're going to discuss the rookie debate on oh, who's a rookie. If you would shut up. <laughs> what else we do? Oh, D-Wade retiring, Witten retiring. We're going to talk about a lot of things today, but I don't know if any of them be a lengthy conversation. So, go ahead. We'll start with the retirement. It's good to know the way. I'm going to tell you a little story right quick. Okay. We was talking previously <laughs> before we started. He and his wife are finishing each other's sentences and saying the same thing because they're in tune with one another. <laughs> And, uh, I never said that. <laughs> he's like, do you and Tichelle ever do that? And I'm like, no. But we as a, I told her, told him a story about something. She tried to pull a rock line on me one time, and it didn't work. It blew up in her face. And uh, I was going to tell him a story. One time, Mason, I was re-watching a bunch of old Raws, and Tichelle was just taking a bath. He's what now? Watching a bunch of old Raws, WWE oh, Raws. Oh, okay. I Back thought you said watching a bunch of old Brawls. Well, <laughs> tomato, potato. I was watching a bunch of old WWF Raws, and Mason had been watching them with me, and he was starting to learn about The Rock. And uh, she's in there taking a bath, and he kicks the door open, and she covers up real fast. He's, he looks, he goes, Mommy, can you smell what The Rock is cooking? <laughs> and she's like, huh? He goes, what's it smell like? As the baby girl. She's groovy. She's she had, groovy? She had a belly ache this morning, I reckon. I think it's because she wasn't around her daddy. I think it's what it was. She wanted her daddy. I was off. Asleep? No, I was. <laughs> Maybe. But I, but I did do some fencing today. So, uh, jump right into the, are we doing playoffs or rookie debate? No, rookie debate. No, we're doing the retirement debates first. Get them oh. out of the way. Gosh almighty, I'm telling you. Have what. we seen the end of Dwayne Wade? I hope no, and I don't think so because he's still a valuable player off the bench. I think the end of Dwayne Wade all depends on what LeBron James does. True, true, true. If LeBron goes and plays with Chris Paul and Carmelo Anthony somewhere, it's almost a shoe win that Dwayne Wade will be right behind. So you think Rock Paul's leaving the Rockets? I don't see Paul leaving the Rockets. I'm not completely. He's ruined. done. He's done so much better. This year than I'm not ruling period. out that LeBron doesn't go to the Rockets. I am. I don't think that's happening. Who knows? They've always wanted to play with each other, and Father Time <coughs> is drawing near the... For the ball, for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, don't for Carmelo to... and Wade. I mean, LeBron's, well, yeah. LeBron's really the only one still playing at an elite level. Right, Chris right. Paul's playing at a really good level, but it's not the same level. Carmelo never was, played Car- level. <laughs> Carmelo was terrible this year, and Dwayne Wade was just, I mean, he's just... D-Wade. He's gone. His, yeah, his knees are gone and everything. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Maybe he should. I think he can still be a valuable player off the bench. And um, I don't want him to. Obviously, he's my favorite player. You know, I don't want him to go. But maybe he should. I don't know. Does it hurt his legacy if he's playing? And with terrible numbers. No. I mean, it didn't hurt Shaq. It's just Dwayne Wade's already got his got his place. Right, right. And, and his he's not rising. No, it's just at this point, just don't try to be something that you're not. Which him going to Miami whenever he got traded and whenever he's in Cleveland, coming off the bench, except in that role, he's going out with grace. Right, so right, right. Just don't try to be something you're not anymore. Right. That's the difference. I don't think it hurts his legacy. Just like no, for instance, Allen Iverson. Exactly. My, you know my opinion of Wade. I think Wade's an all-time great player. Mm-hmm. I just, to me, Dwayne Wade, his window of greatness has it's was gone. is it's been gone for a long time. Yeah. So, it's and Wade's always been a pretty much classy guy. Yeah, I, I've always liked Wade. 
Um, so what about Witten? Jason Witten. Like I said, I got an alert that said that he accepted some type of role with some type right, of sports right, right. analyst, and he was retiring. And I also saw that, you know, not a direct decision has been set in stone and that the right people could change his mind and he could come back until something's – until he doesn't suit up for the Cowboys this fall. You're not really going to know right, right. unless he comes up directly and says, I'm not playing anymore. But what about should he? He's been around for a long time. Get out while he can. He's made but he's his still, money. He's still a good player, man. And he's not. He's not. A, he's not Jason Witten. He's not the player that. But he's still a solid I'm a, tight end. I'm a Cowboys fan. I'm a Jason Witten fan. But he's still a solid tight end. I think he's been with the Cowboys since I was a little boy, and I'm a grown man. So, <laughs> I mean, he's so true. Good. True. <laughs> so it's time. He time. was. Was he pre Tony Romo? Yeah, I think. Yeah, so. that's what I'm thinking. He's been around a while. <laughs> but he's still, I mean, that's what I'm saying. He's still a stop, solid tight end. This is a guy teams would still love to have. Arguably. I don't think he's going to play for any other team. So it's He's arguably one of the greatest tight ends of all time. Right. Probably definitely top three or four. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'd say top three. All right, to the playoffs. All right, yeah. NBA so we can get players. started. So go ahead. So I we'll said, start with these, number one. I, I first, I want to tell you, I sat right here last Thursday and told you exactly how the rest of the playoffs were going to fall out. I told you Toronto was going to close out Washington. I told us exactly. Exactly how it was going to fall out. I told you. Except Steph, for the Rockets. No, would you listen to me? <laughs> or I told, not Rockets. I told uh, you step Thunder. by step. That was there, that was two weeks ago, sir. I'm talking about this past Thursday. I oh, told okay, you step okay. by step how the remainder of the first round was going to fall out. Right, right. I told you the Raptors were going to close out Washington in game six in Washington. They did. And which he's saying, I told you. Well, I told you. I agreed I told you. with you. <laughs> I told you. I told Shaq. I told Junior. And I agreed with somewhere you. Somewhere on this picture, Stop I telling told. telling me. Somewhere on this picture, I told Patrick Patterson. It's just, I did. There's Jay Wall. There's Wall. There's Cousins. <laughs> there's Darius Miller standing right there. But anyway, just chilling in the back. Just right chilling. <laughs> I told you that LeBron and Indiana was going to seven. We yep. actually talked. Mm-hmm. With how's it go? You said Toronto. You thought that you said at first you think it will go seven, and I asked you how it goes, and we both agreed. Right, right. Indiana, Cleveland goes to seven. Cleveland wins. Boston, Milwaukee goes to seven. However, you pick Milwaukee. I oh, pick that's Boston. true. That's I told true. you Boston's going to win because they, they had it on court. I really wanted Bucks to win. That's why, because I was pulling for the Bucks. Okay. So, I mean, it's just as it is. And we talked about, we'll focus on the East here in just a moment. The we West. talked about OKC what? and Utah. You said they're gonna it's gonna go seven and Utah's gonna win. I'm like, game seven will be in Oklahoma City. I don't know if it's gonna get there. So and it didn't. Oklahoma City went out in six. Right. The big arguably probably the biggest disappointment of the NBA season, Oklahoma City Thunder. Oh yes. But we'll focus on the East. You've got the one seed okay, Toronto okay. Raptors and Cleveland Cavaliers playing tonight, whenever you see this, Tuesday, May the first. They will be playing tonight. We'll talk, Should see it tonight. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about the results of that whenever we get together the next time. Right, right. Game two, I believe, for Boston and Philadelphia will be tomorrow or will be Thursday. Boston's up 1-0. They come out and they ran Philadelphia in game one. Just You've got Jason Tatum and Terry Rozier. I think Tatum had 31, Rozier had 29, and then Al Horford had 26. The young Sixers who are just... The talk of the NBA right now, and this was about they, Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown didn't play right, last right. night. Are they running out of gas? I don't know necessarily that they're running out of gas. I think they. I think Brett Brown is not a very good coach. I think he's a decent coach. I don't think he's a very good coach. They're getting out coached through at this point, and I understand it's well, one game. Brad but Stevens in is his a defense, coach. Brad Stevens is a top-notch coach. He's the best coach in the league. In his in in. He, he or Steve Kerr, to me, are the no. one and two for best coaches in the league. Steve right Kerr now. might be number two, but Brad Stevens beats him. I, don't. I said he and Steve Kerr. He. Or, <laughs> yeah, so. I know, but I, I mean, I don't, I don't even know that Steve Kerr is a debatable, other than the championships. But he's had supreme level talent around him. Before the series starts with Toronto and Cleveland, what do you see happening? I'm gonna say it goes six. And the Raptors win. 
as bad as I hate to say LeBron loses, I'm going to say it goes six when the Raptors win. At some point, LeBron, if he doesn't lead the East first, which could be this summer, mm-hmm. at yeah, some point be. LeBron is going to lose in the playoffs before he gets to the finals. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter, is it this year where really all he has is Kevin Love and some younger role players? Or is it another year? DeMar DeRose is playing the best basketball of mm-hmm. his career. Kyle Lowry's not. No. Serge Ibaka's not Well, Kyle good. Lowry's now like 31-32. I mean, he's getting some age to him. I understand, but they gave him a huge contract. And mm. just yeah, but they just took age into it, yeah. I, I Kyle think Lowry had like three great years, and the that's Raptors, how got their contract. The Raptors had the better team. But the Raptors have been built to beat LeBron for the last three to four years. And every single year, DeRozan and Lowry can't get the job done. Right. So I agree. And I want to tell you right now, I think the Raptors are better. But until DeRozan beats LeBron... You're not giving it to him? No. Okay. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to cast in six. Well, see, that's what... I'm giving it to the Raptors because they're a better team. Mm-hmm. In my eyes, they're a better team. Bucks, Philly? Bucks, Philly. Bucks, Philly, Celtics, Philly. <laughs> He's giving wishful thinking. <laughs> I told you that I did not think Boston could beat Philadelphia. Right. How's it if looking Jaylen, If Jalen Brown comes back and is, and is right, he and Jason Tatum were playing fantastic. And me and Cody were talking about this last night. I think the window that Kyrie has of being Boston's best player is very short because I think Tatum's going to pass him. And he made a quote last night. He goes, I think Gordon Hayward's windows being their second best player is already gone. Hmm. And I don't necessarily disagree. Hayward's good. But so are they. Uh, now, this is the argument. Or, well, you never said who you're going to take. Who you got? Boston's already up 1-0. They're still in Philadelphia. Philadelphia, it all comes down to game two. If Philadelphia can even the series at one in game two, I'm taking Philly in seven. If Boston comes out and goes up 2-0, I think they beat Philly in five. Hmm. It, all, it all hinges to me on game two. Yeah, Philly, you, yeah. these young kids for Philadelphia cannot go down 0-2 to Brad Stevens. No, they can't. Yeah, well, they, they can't. But... I think that Philly's better team, yet Boston's coaching makes them the better team. That's what I think. I think that Philly, I don't necessarily think Philadelphia has a better team than Boston. I do. I do. But I'm taking Boston in six. What I think is that of the players on the court right now, Philadelphia should have the two best players in the series. They should have Ben Simmons. And Joel and B, they should both be the two best but, players in the series. As good as what Tatum's playing, as good as what Al Horford's playing, as good as what Jalen Brown has been playing, Ben Simmons, Joel and B are the two best players right. in this series. If they come out and play that way, Philadelphia wins. Mm-hmm. But all that hinges on game two. Right. All that hinges on game two. You can't go down 0 2 no. and then go to Boston. Mm-hmm. That's what. It's good night. I'm saying, I'm saying Boston at six. I'm still sticking with Boston. Uh, and I would be fine seeing Philly win. Actually, I know I said earlier, well, like I said earlier, actually in the video, I remember saying that the Boston team that's on the floor, I'm fine with. I can't stand Kyrie. I like Gordon Hayward. It's not that I can't stand Kyrie. I can't stand Kyrie. I have nothing against Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving's fine. I think he's an idiot. He's an idiot. But he's fine. But He's an idiot, but that's I just don't I, like I don't him. like Al Horford. See, I have no problem with Al Horford, <laughs> even though he played at Florida. No. Uh, so I would be fine with either team winning, but I'm gonna pick Boston in six. But what you know, all the chatter has been about how good Boston's gonna be next year. Are you buying into that? Potentially, they can be. They but can be. It to me, it all depends with what happens with Philadelphia, and what does LeBron do. See. But I don't think that dictates how good they are as a team. You know what I mean? But I think I think it clashes. I think they clash. I do. I think they clash. 
I mean, they've got team players. If IT was there instead of Kyrie, they clash. Possibly. I don't think IT can stand not being the best player on the floor. I do think that they're going to have to move a lot of our death at some point because Brad Stevens is developing players at an unreal pace. Right. Look at Terry Grubbs here. Look at Jalen Brown. Yeah, well, that's, I mean. They can't pay all of these players. It's just so, coaching. I, I mean, mean, that's. He's fantastic. But we've seen players before that play with one coach have do fantastic. Play with a different coach. Before we go to the West, interesting fact, the Toronto Raptors have the <laughs> highest percentage chance to go to the NBA Finals from the East. However, the Philadelphia 76ers have the highest percentage chance to win the Finals from the East. Funny how that works. Percent chance. What Vegas? Oh, I don't care what Vegas is. There's a reason why all those buildings are really tall. <laughs> I'm just telling you, yeah. Vegas is writing a lot more than they're wrong. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. I just I don't care what they say. They have them Philly, they years. might have a higher percentage, but the percentage is not very high of them beating the Golden State Warriors. What is it, 5%? <laughs> By the way, they're expecting Steph to play tonight. We'll just go ahead and jump to the West. Oh, yeah, Steph sure. Steph was ahead. offered to be improbable for game two. We'll just start with the 2-6 match here. Right, right, right. I think this is a sweep. Yeah. I'd, no, no, no. Uh-uh. I don't say sweep. I'm going to say five. I'm going to give Davis one game. Maybe, but it's the Pelicans are so outgunned. As great as Anthony Davis is, yep. as really I great agree. as Rondo and Drew Holiday's played, yep. the, the Warriors, they're, it's yep. good morning, good afternoon, good night with Golden State. I agree. So out, man. And, and I love the Pelicans. And If Boogie was there, maybe it would be a different story. Right. But it's... You I'm, I'm giving them one. I'm saying the Pelicans Maybe. sneak one in. But regardless, I'm still happy with Pelicans. Okay. You all did fantastic. Okay. But you've lost. It's over. So now we go to Houston, Rockets, and Utah. And Utah. Also over. Sweep. Yeah. I don't know about it. It's a sweep. I'm going to give the Jazz one on this one, too. It's a sweep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say 5 it's 1 both West teams. He has no idea what happened in game one and game two. The Pelicans and the Jazz lost by a combined 463 points. Game one and game two. Or game one. and well, I'm talking about game one and game two of the playoffs themselves. Pelicans and Warriors were the first game. The Rockets and Jazz were the second game. Game one, game two. Game ones of the series right, themselves. Right, 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 right. They lost by like a combined 50 points. It's just they were. I'm it's, giving them one. It's not day It's not like I'm saying that they're going to compete. I'm saying they're going to sneak in one win. I don't know. <laughs> I can one see win the Pelicans, at home, they're going to sneak one in. I can see the Pelicans doing it because they have arguably one of the three best players in the league right now. True, Anthony Davis. true. The Jazz don't have it. Uh, yeah, but we've already got the West named. I'm going 5-1, 4-1, five, one, one, five games on both. Because of discrepancy in talent, the Warriors and the Rockets have to win an extra game. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And you're going for or sweep on both. And essentially. And for the nightcap, just a little quick hit or miss topic right here. Should Ben Simmons be considered a rookie? <laughs> Why is it Ben Simmons? Should anybody be considered a rookie? Because that Ben you know, Simmons is the odds on favor to win rookie of the year I this know, year. That's but why I'm just you saying, say Ben Simmons. But should any rookie be considered a rookie that is injured their first season and missed the entire season? What do you think? <sighs> to me, man, I'm hungry. It's hard to put. <laughs> it's hard to separate it because, on one hand, you've got debilitating injuries to where you can't work out, you can't do it. Right, right, right. On the other hand, you have you have injuries to where just they're being held out. They're healthy at this point. Go ahead and send them out the rest of the year. Get them ready for the next season. There's that. Mm -hmm. There's. It's so hard to govern that. Me personally, and Cody and I had this conversation last night, and we agreed. The rules are what the rules are, but we both agree that he should not be considered a rookie. He's had a chance to go through workouts, had a chance to go through team practices. The reason why John Wall didn't win NBA Rookie of the Year, his rookie year, because Blake Griffin won Rookie of the Year because he set out his first season. Right. The last year, people clamored for Joel Embiid to win Rookie of the Year, and it was his third freaking season in the league, and he only played 30 games. But Malcolm Brogdon ended up winning, so justice won. So justice <laughs> But it's not like that's not happened before. It's just that's, that's, right, that's right. the way the rules are. I mean, you can't. 
It's, See, it's the same way in every other sport. Too. I agree, but it honestly should be off of the injury. Are they truly down? Like, let's say they tear an ACL, you know, preseason, and they're out that entire time. They can't do anything. If they they are, can't play. If they would set something to where they are not medically cleared to participate in at least practices, 15 to 20% of team activity, Right. then they can be considered a rookie. Now, Ben Simmons was. Ben Simmons was cleared and ready to play in like January or February. Right, right. No, I, he, I know. They just set him out and saved him. I know. So that's one thing. I'm not, I'm, no, I'm not making Joel Joel Embiid was a bona fide sissy for three years. Was a bona fide sissy. <laughs> um, excuse me. I'm not uh, making that argument. Uh, I'm saying I'm agreeing with you about the injuries. And to me, Donovan Mitchell's the rookie of the year. Because not only, even though you can't practice, the thing that still makes it debatable is you can learn. You can sit here, you can watch game film, you can study the game, even though you can't play it. Last year's probably the only year they've ever got the rookie of the year, and just maybe in recent memory, got it right. So many, and which I'm sure they have in other years, but so often they <coughs> completely just vomit and get it wrong. Right. I mean, just and it's just you know, the year that LeBron, prime example, year LeBron and Carmelo were rookies. LeBron got named Rookie of the Year, and he slightly outscored Carmelo, but Carmelo was Denver's best player and led them to the playoffs. Where LeBron did, yeah. so I mean, to me, Carmelo was Rookie of the Year, but LeBron won Rookie of the Year because he was LeBron. There's been other instances like right. that. I'm just picking on LeBron or Carmelo here. There's been other instances like it throughout NBA history mm-hmm. where it's certain. Magic Johnson didn't win Rookie of the Year. Right. Larry Bird did. And, fast fact, Larry Bird had been a member of the Boston Celtics for two years. Hmm. It was his first year with Boston, but then you were able to get drafted while still in college right. and stay in college. He was, his senior year that he played in Indiana State, he was technically a member of the Boston Celtics. Hmm. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. But, um, uh, I agree he should not be considered Donovan Mitchell's rookie of the year. Because he's a true rookie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you can study the game even if you can't play. I mean, you could study, you Do can you learn. Do you give any considerations to anyone else other than Mitchell? Like, does anybody else combat him for rookie of the year? I don't think so. Not even Jason Tatum? I don't think so. Not through the regular season. Not even maybe Kyle Kuzma? No, it's Donovan Mitchell. I agree. Donovan Mitchell was the Jazz's best. He knocked the Jazz's premier top player. That's Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert is just, he's their defensive anchor. He's their best player. Right, right, right. Donovan Donovan Mitchell will be their best player. He's their best offensive player. I agree. I'm just, I'm playing. Now, Kyle Kuzma's good. I'm playing Devil's Eye. And so is, I mean, obviously, so is Tatum. Right? But, oh, no, it's Donovan Mitchell's. There's a reason that it's Ben Simmons versus Donovan Mitchell. You know what I mean? I mean, there's a reason that that's the case right now. One of them two is going to win it. And looking, I mean, if if you're counting Ben Simmons as a rookie, he's won it to me. He's the better player. But he had so much time to study and to learn. And, and I can't stand that Simmons. So <laughs> I would rather it be Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> I'm glad one of us can be unbiased in these debates. I can't be. <laughs> If I like you, I like you. If I don't, I don't. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I've been very open how I'm not a Boston fan. I can't stand Al Horford. I've done nothing but praise Al Horford's <laughs> performances in the Now, I praise Ben Simmons. I understand. I'm being unbiased on that one. I understand. But I point out how if I'm letting my feelings be the judge, <laughs> Ben Simmons don't win it. <laughs> ben Simmons be out of league. I can't stand him. But he is a fantastic player. And he's going to, I mean, he's still going to be. He's doing going to nothing but improve. But no, you can study the game, they ain't a rookie. Same thing with uh, Blake Griffin, Joel Embiid, all of them. It's the exact same thing. You can watch game film, you can study the game and learn as much as you can. Could you see a situation where they give them co-rookie of yours? I don't, like it. I don't think it's been done since 94. I don't like it. At all. I don't think it's been done since 90. Like, if that's the case, get 94, co-MVPs, 95, and I don't like that either. Do you know who the co- last co-rookie of the years were? God, no. 
Jason Kidd, Grant Hill. No, I didn't know that. But let me ask you a question. Ironically, they went into the Hall of Fame this year together. I know I didn't say that we were going to talk about this, but this is one that I just thought of. Why or how come... People want shorter videos. I'm sorry. How come the MVP race in NBA is not based off totals? Like every other MVP race in the league. I mean, in Because the in, in the NBA, the best player on the team has so much more. The most valuable player on a basketball team can have so much more of an impact than literally every other team sport. So what's that got to do with totals versus averages? It's not based on totals in the NBA. I know, but why? That's why. Is, where's your argument for averages over totals? That's what I'm saying. I don't. I. I guess I'm just not understanding what your argument is. My, my, what I'm asking is instead of taking points as a total, right, or rebounds as a total, or assists as a total, and saying this is the total points, rebounds, assists for this guy. This is the total points, rebounds, assists for this guy that you're wanting to Do win. Do you want MVP. the MVP in baseball to be like he hit <coughs> point such and such home runs a game? That sounds silly. Well, but that's my point. What about touchdowns? You can do it in football. Brady throws 50 touchdowns a season. He only plays 16 games. He threw 2.5 touchdowns a game, and this also, guy threw 2.1. With the exception of the yards total, because they're putting in there <coughs> a massive chunk of total of yards, it's a lot easier to keep track of total stats. It's a lot easier to know exactly how many touchdowns somebody threw than the total number of points somebody threw. But they know season. it. And also, like don't you tell said, me they don't know it. Like you said, the season, the season as a whole, if you went by totals, maybe the MVP averaged 25 a game, but he didn't lead the league in scoring because maybe he only played 76 games in that season and someone else averaged 24 but points a game and played all 82. You're going to look at that. And I think longevity is a... Is a I like having the average stats, I think. I don't, no, I'm just wondering. I mean, I don't care one way or the other. Honestly, I don't give a crap. But I was just wondering. I Ladies watched the video. This is the thing to keep him up at night. Yeah, it is, really. I was sitting thinking about crap. i got to wash my mouth. About, about messed up. <laughs> but Colin Cowherd, that idiot, right? I watched a video today where he was talking about that. And I just thought about it. How come NBA is the only one who doesn't do totals? How come somebody even cares? <laughs> Whatever. I'm just, I'm just saying, what's it matter? <laughs> uh so anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed that video, hit the like button there. Uh, share with your friends. Like us on Facebook. If we hit 50 subscribers, we're pretty close. What are we at? 46, 47, something like that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, if we hit 50, we are still going to do the live video where you can ask us questions. And, I mean, I'll have the phone sitting right there so everybody can hear you. Um, and we're I'm pretty anxious to do it, are you? We just got to get three or four more. How many ever we need? Uh, we really care, don't we? But anyway. <laughs> I'm anything bad, to be sir? sunburned. Oh, my Lord. My face looks redder than yours. Because you're excited. Excited? <laughs> He's got supper on the stove. He's ready. Yeah, I'm hungry. If you, you, I don't think y'all can hear it, but my belly grab in the middle By of the way, shout out. You all suck. <laughs> shout out.